There is no question that a significant number of movie plots depend on their characters being idiots. Why bring an unknown exotic gremlin home to your child as a present, for instance? Why leave a comatose, time-traveling teenager in a back alley for anyone to find? Why make another dinosaur park when the last one killed all those people? Luckily, the idiots behind such plot-advancing silliness do at least ensure that the experience for the audience is fun. The Little Mermaid wouldn't have had any dramatic tension if Ariel just wrote Prince Eric a note about needing a kiss now, would it? And Memento's great ending wouldn't have been possible if Leonard just had a tape recorder or something. We need idiots. We love idiots. We are them, sometimes. There's a special type of idiocy that seems to affect superheroes and villains in comic book movies too. And thanks to them supposedly being superior, it is even funnier and more frustrating when they show their true colors. With that in mind then, I am the infinitely intelligent Ash from What Culture. No one say anything about my pronunciation problem. And these are 10 really stupid decisions in comic book movie history. 10. Lex accidentally unites his enemies. Batman v Superman. Batman v Superman is far from the cleverest superhero movie out there, but it would take a lot for anything in it to be dumber than Lex Luthor's plan. Under the apparent guise of stopping Superman from becoming an instrument of tyranny, or perhaps just because he doesn't like him, Luthor seeks to destroy Supes by having him and Batman fight. As an added bonus, he hopes they'll destroy each other. Quite why he doesn't think that just unleashing Doomsday on them both separately is a better idea than, say, getting them together and running the risk of them aligning against him when they realize what his flimsy plan really is, is unknown. And bringing Wonder Woman along for the ride too. He effectively engineers his own downfall. 9. Thanos gives away an Infinity Stone. The Avengers. Considering his singular desire to unite the Infinity Stones, the fact that Thanos had one prior to the events of Loki's invasion of Earth is a strange revelation. As shown elsewhere in the MCU, having just one stone adds significant powers and the very stone he has, the Mind Stone, is responsible for empowering Scarlet Witch and basically turning Vision into a god. Giving that away, even when thinking it could help double his stones haul, is beyond idiotic. And yet, Thanos hands over the scepter and the Mind Stone to Loki, trusting someone he should never have even considered working with to bring it back to him when he'd used it to conquer Earth. Even though Loki with two stones would probably have been too powerful for Thanos if he decided, as he usually did, not to cooperate. So far, we have had no answer to this question, and it is probably not coming now. 8. Giving the Reality Stone to the Collector Thor The Dark World the Asgardians might talk like thespians and dress like middle-class cosplayers, but they're pretty dumb sometimes. For instance, Odin's mistreatment of Loki turns him into a supervillain, and the old man somehow manages to be duped by a fake gauntlet that he puts in a vault rather than tossing it in the trash. One of the great moments of stupidity on Asgard actually happens in the interest of protecting the place. Because you can't have two Infinity Stones in one place, Sif and Volstagg are sent to hand over one of the most powerful items in the known multiverse to the Collector, a shady spaceman who screams bad guy thanks to his hair and massive fur cloak alone. Why didn't anyone, like Heimdall for instance, who can see the entire universe, run a little research on the Collector, who immediately reveals he is in no way suited to protecting the stone? He's not even remotely affiliated with Asgard, so why choose him at random to guard it at all? He doesn't even have any security! 7. The Butler Gets Harry Osborn Killed Spider-Man 3 Putting aside the fact that Norman Osborn's butler has a secret double life as a pathologist with a specialism in recognizing glider wounds, he also is the reason why his boss is killed. As Alfred from the Batman movies would tell you, the ideal for a butler is not having to bury the people he butlers for. But that is exactly what the Osborns' butler does. Because he, for no reason anyone could possibly fathom, decides not to tell Harry that Spider-Man didn't kill Norman, despite finding out pretty much straight away. Instead, he allows Harry to harbor dark feelings of vengeance that consume him till he becomes the second goblin. And then he dies, which he absolutely wouldn't have if he'd just remained Harry Osborn, businessman, and not become Harry Osborn, hoverboard surfing Power Ranger. Even before then, his life is ruined and it's all because the butler kept his secret, to the benefit of precisely nobody. It's not like he was sworn to secrecy about his father, as Peter Parker was, a vow he kept to even as Harry tried to kill him, the dick. 6. Thor defies Odin to invade Jotunheim Thor 
The whole point of Thor in his first movie is that he is one big sexy space jock who likes smashing heads and protecting the honor of Asgard by killing literally thousands of people. He is a law unto himself, and the plot revolves around him learning humility in order to prove himself worthy. In order to get there, he has to do the opposite first, which all hinges on him being a massive, beautiful idiot and trying to unsettle peace in the Nine Realms despite his father's insistence to butt out. After the Frost Giants invade Asgard to try and steal the casket of ancient winters from Odin's vault of trophies and fake things, Thor reciprocates the challenge over the disrespect. Naturally, there's a battle, and the Asgardians, the Warriors 3, Sif, and Loki alongside Thor are outnumbered, and Odin has to intervene before angrily banishing Thor and stripping him of his powers. 5. Choosing to deal with Trask at the wrong time X-Men Days of Future Past there's a reason why the baby Hitler conundrum focuses on the idea of time traveling back to kill the infant. It's because that is the easiest time to dispose of him, as well as it being more of a moral challenge. So it makes sense that that's when you'd do it. You wouldn't wait until three minutes before he started being a murderous dictator, giving yourself a challenge for the sake of the cameras. Well, you might not, but the X-Men did. Faced with the need to stop evil geneticist Trask, the days of future X-Men send Wolverine's mind back in time to the days of past X-Men via Kitty Pryde to help them stop him leading the extermination of mutant kind. Not only is it ridiculous to choose that time when Logan had been alive for decades already, but it's made all the worse by the fact that Xavier is a mess, Magneto is an incarcerated baddie, and Mystique is off-grid. Even if they didn't go back to when Trask was a child, choosing literally any time but this would have been preferable. 4. Commissioner Gordon sends the entire police force into a trap. The Dark Knight Rises There are typically two questions that fans and critics can't quite let go when it comes to The Dark Knight Rises. The first one, dealing with how Bruce Wayne managed to get back to Gotham, usually comes down to an angry, because he's Batman, retort. But the other is more problematic still. Why is it that a decorated cop and leader believes it is a good idea to send the entire police force into the Gotham sewer system in pursuit of Bane? Sure, send some of them, but mismanaging Gotham PD's entire resources like allowing a pack of dogs to chase a ball is completely out of character. Even for a less intelligent, inexperienced man, it would be utterly idiotic. He might as well have baited Bane's trap himself. 3. Ra's al Ghul accidentally weaponizes Bruce Wayne Batman Begins There's a long history of movie characters creating their own villains, and it happens a lot more in comic book movies because of the idea of heroes and villains forming two sides of the same coin. The Joker makes Batman, Iron Man creates Ultron, and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man wouldn't be a bad guy without Sandman's criminal involvement. It happens! What are you gonna do? On the same front, Batman wouldn't be Gotham's protector without Ra's al Ghul turning him into one whilst training him to help him destroy Gotham. Rather than checking to see where Wayne stands on the idea of blowing Gotham up, Raz weaponizes him with incredibly efficient training and equips him with everything he needs to thwart his grand plan. Did he not even ask Bruce where he was born? That might have been a good indicator that he wasn't a viable candidate. 2. Loki banishes Odin Thor Ragnarok Loki is, somewhat famously, driven only by the endgame that sees him as powerful as possible. Big respect. If he makes any alliances, they're done in service of that agenda, and every time he flip-flops on being good or bad or completely morally non-binary, he is just trying to advance himself. He probably doesn't always think straight whilst trying to achieve that, because power is intoxicating to even the smartest characters, but that doesn't justify him kicking off Ragnarok and destroying Asgard indirectly because of his need for more. That's what he does by tricking Odin and banishing him to Earth, because the Allfather's absence frees Hela and leads the genocide of the people he briefly ruled. Removing the protector of the Nine Realms was not a smart move. In fact, calling him a moron is too good for him. 1. The whole Gamora issue Avengers Infinity War In the wake of Infinity War's release, Peter Quill took a lot of heat. Despite the emotional turmoil of finding out his true love had been killed, not so long after his mother-murdering father and his real daddy were killed, nobody seemed capable of giving him a break when he punched Thanos. It didn't matter the context or the fact that Doctor Strange could have stopped Thanos before this point in multiple ways but actively chose not to, because Star-Lord breaking Mantis's hold on him was too much of a crime. In short, Quill was responsible for the snap. But hang on! Is he even the one to blame here? What about Mantis and Nebula telling Star-Lord about Gamora's death in not so many words? 
Why did neither of them foresee the fact that he would be emotionally unstable, Mantis in particular since she reads emotions, if he found out that she was even remotely in danger? Why not just wait until the gauntlet is off Thanos? It was literally about to come off! Idiots. And that's our list. What other stupid comic book movie decisions should be on this list? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Make sure to subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this. And don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. Thanks for watching.